People refer to it all the time. We talk about its food and its history and its heat. But what is the South? Well, that all depends on who you're talking to. So the original notion of the South is defined by the Mason-Dixon line, which was drawn by a couple of English dudes named, you guessed it, Mason and Dixon, to settle some border disputes between the then British colonies of Maryland and Pennsylvania. When Pennsylvania abolished slavery in 1780, the line became the de facto demarcation between slave states and not slave states, culturally speaking, the North and the South. It's difficult to overstate how much this imaginary line in the sand came to define what the South would be in the future. So slave states and free states, is that the South? Well, the story isn't over yet. Then the Civil War happened. If there was ever a way to make a distinction between geographical pieces of a country, it's a bloody war between them. Here's the Confederate states in the order of their secession. The bottom halves of both New Mexico and Arizona, believe it or not, also seceded from the United States in 1861 and 1862, respectively. Kentucky and Missouri were both border states whose citizens were split on the topic. Some fought for the Confederacy, some for the Union. Delaware, Maryland, and the District of Columbia were all slave states on either side of the Mason-Dixon line, if you'll remember. All three fought with the Union Army, however. What we're looking at here is more or less what is considered to be Dixie, the former Confederate states, plus the split Kentucky and Missouri. But what about some more cultural notions of the South? The Bible Belt kind of looks like this. This region of the country tends to have a higher proportion of churchgoers than other parts of the country. Evangelical Protestantism is the dominant religion, except in port cities like New Orleans and Mobile, Alabama, where French and Spanish Catholics settled early and took hold. Notice too that the states west of Texas are excluded from this notion of the South, as they usually are. In a more folksy line of reasoning that may actually be more descriptive than others, a blog several years ago did some analysis and identified what is called the Sweet Tea Line. They looked at a survey of several hundred McDonald's restaurants in the border state of Virginia and found the northernmost line at which the restaurants stopped selling sweet tea and the southernmost line where they stopped selling unsweet tea. The spot in between, the median, they called the Sweet Tea Line, the real border of the South. It could also just be areas where folks speak like they're from the South. According to maps and almanacs of the Southern American dialect, defining characteristics of a Southern accent, especially the pen pen merger, can be seen as far away as Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Indiana. We've really only discussed geographical definitions of the South here. But the South, despite a stereotype that just won't quit, fades slowly into the rest of the world in the same way that the rest of the world fades into us. Its far branching cultures are as different from one another as they are from places on the outside. And the Mason Dixon line is imaginary, anyway. For Reckon, I'm Ian Hoppy. <laughs>